Let's take a look at the eicosanoids and their role in inflammation. We'll then also touch on some of the different anti-inflammatory agents that are used um, to treat this inflammation. So with our eicosanoids, their formation starts with the cleavage of a 20-carbon arachidonic acid from the phospholipids in the cell membrane or that make up the cell membrane. This reaction is catalyzed uh, by different phospholipase enzymes, which we'll look at in a minute. Once the arachidonic acid is cleaved, it can either undergo a linear or cyclic pathway uh, to produce different eicosanoids. We'll look at the linear pathway on the right first. So with the linear pathway, the arachidonic acid is further metabolized by the lipoxygenase enzymes, resulting in formation of the leukotrienes and lipoxins. Uh, leukotrienes play a role in asthma, and so some of the anti um, asthmatic drugs um, target these uh, molecules. We also see lipoxins are anti-inflammatories. They are not drug targets. The second pathway that the arachidonic acid can go through is what's called the cyclic pathway. This involves the cyclooxygenase enzymes, and it is going to produce the prostaglandins, um, including prostacyclin, uh, prostaglandin E2, as well as the thromboxanes. Um, so thromboxane A2 is involved in platelet aggregation. It's the prostaglandins that are primarily thought of as the uh, eicosanoids responsible for inflammation, and so those are the ones that we'll touch on. Um, if you also take a look, you'll see that different drug classes used to treat inflammation are going to be the steroids, um, which are going to target the enzymes responsible for cleavage of the arachidonic acid from the membrane, as well as COX-1 and 2 um, inhibitors. So those are just small molecule inhibitors. A very important step in the formation of the eicosanoids is the cleavage of the arachidonic acid from the phospholipids that make up the cell membrane. Uh, looking here, there are a number of different phospholipases that are available. Uh, the ones we're interested in are this phospholipase A2. This cleaves the fatty acid at the 2 position on that glycerol backbone. Uh, you'll recall that we said if you have an unsaturated fatty acids, that those are normally incorporated at the 2 position on glycerol. Um, so it's not surprising then that our unsaturated arachidonic acid moiety then is um, bound at the two position on the glycerol backbone. So this is kind of the major phospholipase we think of um, when we think about the eicosanoids. The second phospholipase that can uh, result or lead to the release of arachidonic acid is phospholipase C. Um, so the difference here is phospholipase A2 really directly cleaves our arachidonic acid in a single step whereas the phospholipase C um, is going to require an additional one to two lipases in order to generate the arachidonic acid. So this involves two to three steps to release the arachidonic acid. So again, we're going to really focus on the phospholipase A2. Once the arachidonic acid is liberated, this is where it can either go through the cyclic pathway shown here on the left hand side where we produce those prostaglandins and thromboxanes um, or alternatively it could go through the linear pathway on the right hand side producing your leukotrienes and lipoxins. As a reminder uh, structurally with the prostaglandins the key structural feature is this five membered uh, cyclopentane ring uh, found on the eicosanoid uh, thromboxanes have um, the six-membered ring containing oxygen um, in it, the oxane. So those are the two key structural features coming through the cyclic pathway. Um, going through the linear pathway with our leukotriene, we're looking for three conjugated double bonds, or triene. And then our lipoxins, 
are also going to contain the conjugated uh, double bonds, but then additionally they have this uh, vicinal um, hydroxyl groups located um, adjacent to the, um, the triene. So that's structurally uh, the differences between the different classes of acosinoids. As I mentioned before, with respect to inflammation, the pathway or acosinoid family that we're concerned about are the prostaglandins. Um, and so from a drug development standpoint, or drugs are actually on the market, um, we do have the NSAIDs um, that target um, this pathway. So the NSAIDs are going to be inhibitors of the COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. And it's really this COX-2 enzyme that's important for the inflammation. Uh, COX-1 um, also provides a cytoprotective effect in the stomach. Um, so some of the COX-2 selective inhibitors were developed to try to get around or circumvent um, the GI upset that occurs with the NSAIDs. So the mechanism of action for our NSAIDs, again, is the um, inhibition of especially the COX-2 isozyme that inhibits or prevents the formation of the prostaglandin H2, which is responsible for inflammation. The other class of anti-inflammatory drugs that we have that we've covered um, in biochem are the glucocorticoids. So recall that the glucocorticoids are um, steroids. So these have intracellular receptors, so they actually get inside the cell, bind to their receptors, and what they're going to do is alter gene expression. Um, and in particular, the gene that we're interested in is this annexin A1. Um, so the glucocorticoids uh, will cause the synthesis of the annexin A1 gene, and it's the production of the annexin A1 peptide that can inhibit uh, phospholipase A2, uh, thereby preventing the cleavage of the arachidonic acid from... Um, the phospholipids in the cell membrane, so you prevent the inflammation uh, process from occurring. So to summarize, we've talked about two different types of anti-inflammatory agents. Uh, we have the NSAIDs, which are reversible inhibitors of the COX enzymes, and these can either be non-selective or COX-2 selective. So these work by altering the activity of an existing protein. In contrast, our second uh, class of anti-inflammatory agents is the glucocorticoid. These work by altering the gene expression of the annexin A1 protein that results in inhibition of the phospholipase A2 enzyme, uh, thereby preventing cleavage of the arachidonic acid from the uh, phospholipids in the cell membrane. So these these drugs work by altering the expression of some new protein. So that wraps up our discussion of the anti-inflammatory agents.